Art and science are often thought to exist independently, but they can be powerful when used in combination. For example, art played an important role in the formation of the national parks, as a ranger at Billings Farm National Park in Vermont explained. One of the things that moved people in the 19th century was visual images, the visual imagery of the painters and the photographers coming back from the western United States, for example, were a large part of the inspiration for the formation of the national parks because people in the eastern part of the United States didn't know what there was. So a lot of the paintings that we have in the house come from the Hudson River School of Painters who inspired people to view the landscape in different ways, to to know what was there, but also to think that it was worthwhile looking at a landscape. Art and science continue to work productively together, such as when park rangers invite artists to install natural exhibits in the forest, helping their visitors make meaningful connections with nature. It's another one of those tools that has come into use by conservationists. So for our visitors visiting the park, what, does that do anything? Does it enhance their visit? Does it tell them anything? Concern over climate change is a global phenomenon, and people are using art as a tool to convey environmental concerns in many areas of the world. In Thimphu, the capital city of Bhutan, an artist gave examples of how art can be used to communicate issues such as global warming and pollution. Even I remember one of the guy, he installed a big ice cube and then gradually it melts and you know he's trying to depict climate change. He made a very large sculpture, a fish uh, by rubbish, uh, like all the trash and all. So basically he's trying to show climate change, the level of oceans and how the people throw the garbage. The power of art and science used in combination is that it gives personal meaning to otherwise abstract scientific ideas and helps people to make connections between science and their everyday life. How does art work in this way? We talked to a musician at the local farmer's market in Norwich, Vermont. I think that artist types try to live simply. I think that there's a mentality to, you know, creating that you you can respect where things come from. And I think a lot of my writing now kind of reflects where I live now that we live in the middle of the woods. You know, it's, it's definitely a part of my broader lifestyle and trying to be as good to the earth as we possibly can. But it isn't necessary to be a full-time artist to make personal connections. All of us make art every day, and this gives us an important perspective on the science involved in what we're doing. It personalizes it. Even, you know, my mom, even mom making a dish, she add ingredients, you know. That is art. She prepared and she designed beautiful food, and someone take pictures and they upload. That is art. Even on the other side of the world, Art comes in many forms. By creating meals artfully, one gains access to environmental issues relating to the origins of our food. By learning more about where our food comes from, we can learn about water and pesticide use, nutrition, and sustainable farming techniques. Art has been used as a tool for a long time and has played an important role in the history of conservation in the United States. Globally, it will continue to be a valuable resource as we communicate about environmental issues. We're now realizing that the art we all make in our everyday lives may be the key to personalizing these issues and creating the changes needed to solve problems.